households have changed their habits more than expected. Uh, forecasts around household savings over the last couple of years generally had it improving a bit and then Kiwis giving the game away and going back to their bad old habits. Uh, the evidence is accumulating they're not going to do that because they know how much reduction of debt they need to achieve and it looks like their household saving rate is going to improve and that's pretty good news. Uh, in fact, it hasn't looked like that for a long time. A small um, peak there in the year 1999 when I was last Finance Minister. Um, <laughs> not quite sure how that happened. Uh, but it is lifting. One thing people have forgotten, you know, we've had a lot of focus on savings in the last 10 years in New Zealand. I think that's starting to bear fruit. On the 1st of April 2013, uh, KiwiSaver contributions go up by 50%. We announced that last budget, it's been forgotten about, but both employers and employees will go from 2 percentage points of income to 3 percentage points of income. Uh, and we believe that you know, in, when times are a bit uncertain that's uh, a significant step and we wouldn't want to push it uh, too much further. Still 15,000 people a month joining KiwiSaver. We talked a lot about our external uh, debt and our net international investment position has improved but is forecast to go backwards again. And here is why. Uh, the yellow line is our gross savings rate, that's government, households and business, and that's picking up. And that is a good thing. At the same time, however, our investment expectations are picking up. Now that growth in investment is driven by businesses whose balance sheets are in pretty good shape actually, wanting to invest and expand because they are succeeding. Uh, it's also driven by uh, the one-off of Canterbury and, relate, and connected to that, or related to that, uh, a shift in residential investment uh, as people pick up a bit more confidence. The gap between the two is the current account deficit. Now on the current account, you know, again there's no magic to the current account, you can only influence it indirectly. Uh, in 2006, 7, 8 we had the worst three year period we've ever had on the current account at minus 8% and that was driven by excessive consumption, a lot of which was funded by excessive debt. All the wrong reasons to have a bad current account, and it was a sign of a very unbalanced economy. We, the export sector was shrinking. Right through that period we all felt we were doing so well. And the non-tradable sector, government, finance companies, real estate, was, bloom, was booming. Now we all know that party's over. The current account deficit uh, is likely to deteriorate. The one positive factor is that it will be driven by investment, not consumption. That deterioration will be driven by people investing in future capacity and earning capacity, uh, not by consumption. But you can see our savings rate still has some way to go to fill that gap. It also explains um, the inflow of offshore investment. Because for that investment to happen, we can't source it all, someone else has to provide it. Uh, and it's all adding to that stock of long-term uh, international obligations that New Zealand has. Uh, and uh, I think we're on the right track, but it's going to take a long time who knows, a decade, uh, to get back to where we need to be.